Hello and welcome to the interviews from my hometown, hosted by myself, Seth Campbell. Today we have um, current youth pastor for Sage Hills Church and future father, um, <laughs> Connor Metcalf. Connor, h- how's it going? Yeah, it's going great. You know, I just uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a pleasure to be sitting down with you. Always enjoy chatting with you, and uh, yeah, there's nothing better than doing this on a thursday afternoon sunny skies outside yeah i mean we're sitting in your office right now and the the view outside your window is just magnificent i mean i'm almost bummed out that this is a podcast and not a a video interview a vlog so that i mean i want the audience to be able to experience this view well we'll just have to paint a board picture that's right we will just the mountains out there a little bit of snow and then just blue skies and sun it's incredible. It, I, I, you know what, being from Southern California originally, like I am happy that we're breaking into spring. And I know there's a lot of doubters out there, a lot of cynics that, that want to think that winter is going to creep up on us. But man, I think we're here. I think we're breaking into spring. Well, I mean, the groundhog didn't see his shadow. So, you know what? He said spring was going to come early. Spring's and coming early. I think it did. I think, I it's, think it's already I th- here. I think <laughs> spring is already here. I, I really do believe that too. And end of February too. That's crazy. What a lovely, what a lovely thing. But I mean, it's kind of that rollover effect that we had. I mean, winter was pretty gnarly last year. Yeah. And, uh, and, and to be honest, like we didn't really have much of a summer. We, I mean, there was probably like three weeks, two, three weeks yeah, where it was like 90, a hundred, maybe but, a month. It, it wasn't much so. And I remember that because I was like really trying to get out on the river and like head up to Lake Chelan mm-hmm. and i just remember it was like 75 the entire summer and i was like there's no way yeah there's no way i'm getting in the water like that so yeah so connor i, I gotta ask how long have you lived here in wenatchee my hometown uh my wife and i moved up to wenatchee july 10th 2018 okay yeah you have an exact date too have wow. the exact date man it's uh it's, it's weird when you get older <laughs> and there's these specific things and milestones and checkpoints like you you remember dates so yeah. And where did you live before Wenatchee? Yeah, so uh, my wife and I got married. Here's another date for you. June 16th, 2018. Okay. Um, I was actually teaching fifth grade down in Las Vegas. Okay. So I was personally in Las Vegas. Uh, Cassidy, my wife, was down in Southern California. So I'm originally from, born in Las Vegas, moved. Uh, my family lived there until I was 16, moved when I was 16 to Southern California. So it was kind of a split half and half of my life. But the last year before I moved up here, I was in Las Vegas. Okay. Uh, what did your family do for a living? Yeah, dude. So uh, my mom was a manager uh, at Saks Fifth Avenue, still is a merchandising manager. Um, so she kind of runs the operations of the retail store Saks Fifth Avenue down in, in California. Um, Orange County. My dad is a golf instructor. And so he runs camps and facilitates camps and, and coaches and teaches, uh, you know, kids, high school students, college students. And he, he does lessons for older people as well. But yeah, he, he coaches and teaches golf. Okay, cool. So. Yeah. What does your wife Cassidy do when she's not pregnant? <laughs> when she's not pregnant, yeah. So uh, my wife Cassidy is an auditor, so stay out okay. of trouble and you probably won't ever see her. Um, but yeah, no, she she's in the tax field, so she works a ton. Mm-hmm. Um, up until probably two weeks ago, she's just a beast. She works out three to four times a week, um, even nine months pregnant. It's yeah. pretty amazing. <laughs> um, but yeah, she, you know, we, we love getting outside. We love coffee so we will go and grab some coffee take a walk um bike ride hike you know mm-hmm. she was a basketball star in college high school and college so okay. uh she hasn't thrown on the shoes and laced <laughs> up since then but uh no we still get a couple of competitive games of pig every now and then where i will humbly say she kicks my butt in that <laughs> so yeah um so in town here in Wenatchee, besides mela because that's the main place <laughs> that's right. to get coffee totally what's the best place to get coffee in town Oh, okay. So, um, lately I've been doing most of my meetings at Bella Bistro. I, okay. I love the atmosphere there. If you're looking for an every day of the week place, that's, that's my spot. They serve blue star coffee. They just recently made that switch. It's a great open environment, lots of windows, great natural light, um, great atmosphere, cute little, you know, style inside. They've always got really great art wall or artwork hanging on the wall, but my 
ultimate favorite place in the Wenatchee area um, is Anjou Bakery, and it's oh. out in Monitor. Okay, yeah, yeah. Just before Cashmere, and it's only open Thursdays through Sundays. Mm-hmm. So it's not an every day of the week thing, but you're heading out to Leavenworth, um, you know, for a weekend thing, or heading out to Seattle, stop by Anjou Bakery. You'd right. be surprised, yeah. I think I've been there once, and I got like a cinnamon roll. Yeah, because because <laughs> I'm cinnamon all the way. Because like, what else would you get? Exactly. Right. Yeah. Um. So, you've lived in Wenatchee for two years now, right? Yep. Just Coming up on two years. Just about yeah. two years. Yeah. Um, and I know you listen to a lot of worship music. That's right. Um. What, besides like a Sage Hills students or regular Sunday worship, mm-hmm. what's your go to like? If you're going to listen to live music. Oh, man, yeah. What are, you, what are you listening to? Yeah, other other than worship. Other than worship. Okay, I was going to say, if I'm listening to worship, um, dude, I, I rock with Mosaic, man. I think they're kind of just setting the trend for for worship music and kind of what it's breaking into. Uh, they, they got so many songs that are just kind of kind of revolutionizing the sound of worship when it comes to the musical component um but man they're still they're rock solid in there um you know the the i don't want to go as deep to say theology Mm -hmm. um but yeah they they just really kind of hit the point with worship and do it in a style um outside of worship music oh man that's a great question you know i (sighs) I don't really have like a specific uh, group, you know, I just, I really like, uh, I like rap and hip hop, Mm -hmm. right? So I'm constantly um, looking at like tracks for that, Uh, specific songs, you know, specific songs that I find. One of the the guys that, um, and I will say there, you know, there are some some words in it sometimes that uh, are not honoring to the Lord. But I will say that I go on on YouTube and there's a there's a guy that uh, has a couple of different channels, but uh, swervy tracks and and swaggy tracks. Hmm. And there's a lot of underground artists and songs that uh, that he puts on there that are really, really good, really good. One of them is uh, by Taib Ali. And it's Welcome to Philadelphia. That's a song that when I'm trying to throw on some music and go for, for a cruise, it's just kind of that smooth, almost kind of jazzy uh, rap and hip-hop. Okay. So, yeah, look that up. I will. I'm always looking for new music. And I do not want to be held reliable or accountable if <laughs> you do not agree with some lyrics in there. I, I believe it's not not super explicit i know Mm -hmm. there's not a lot of uh, of cuss words or derogatory things that are provocative things that are being said but if there is some in there i i just want to state that um (laughs) you're listening to it with your own discretion yeah so no i I mean i think if i were to go on my watch right now the last song i was listening to was motley Crue's live wire okay okay uh actually yeah, so, so so you brought I, that up. I'm I'm pretty much on the same page of I listen to music and I don't really care what they say in it. Totally. But yeah. I'm still going to honor the Lord through Amen. through whatever I do. Amen. It's just whatever I want to listen to is kind of like it's there. Yeah, it's what right. I listen to. Right. You know, and I think there's this, this component um you know, when I was in college, I I went to Christian universities throughout my my career and um there are a lot of each one was kind of diverse in their their theological breakdown or their belief or their denominational track or pole or village um, tribe, whatever word you want to use for it. But um, I took a lot of different classes because I was a communication major on kind of studying the forms of communication. And one of the things that we had to take was an art and culture class. Mm-hmm. And I wrote a super interesting paper that was. Uh, It was only because the topic was super interesting, but it was, can we listen to music or watch movies and still see the glory and the wonder of God, his creation and the giftings that he gives people um, where maybe they don't use it for God's glory? Can we still see that inside of 
what they're creating, Mm -hmm. right? Can we still see the nature of God as creator, as gift giver, as provider inside of these modes? And it really kind of changed my perspective on how I listen to music. And, and don't get me wrong. If I hear some things, I mean, I'm not trying to listen to a rap song that has, you know, 75% cuss words and provocative language, um, terminology inside of it. I mean, I just, that, that kind of stuff makes me cringe. So I, I rapidly turn Mm -hmm. that off, but you know, occasionally every now and then a little journey, a little ACDC, you know, not typically honoring to the Lord with the lyrics that they're singing, but I, I can sit and I can listen with an appreciation for um, the fact that the Lord created them, created them in his image. And not only that, he, he gave them the gifts and the ambition and the perseverance to get to where they were in creating that music. And it, and it, it still sounds wonderful, Mm -hmm. right? It's pleasing to the ear. So, you know, in a weird way, a lot of people might not understand it, but I still see God in his glory inside of that. Yeah. You know, and that allows me to continue to praise him. Continuing with, uh, music, you've said that you like to freestyle if you can. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, I've heard it. Uh, most of the youth group has heard it during our, large worship night at the beginning of this year. Uh, yep, yep. Yeah, the KC been, block party. Yeah, the yep. block party. Um do you plan on continuing that anyway or <laughs> <laughs> my rap career? Uh yeah, you know man, I just uh I had a buddy, my best friend down in California in high school. Um still one of my one of my best friends to this day. His name is Rudy Delgado. Shout out Rudy. Um Rudy's killing it in the esports world. Okay. Um he and I grew up and we, we felt pretty lost and not seen and we felt pretty inadequate in a lot of ways. And um, I think that that was one of the outlets that whether I felt good at it or not, that was one of the ways that I could uh, decompress what we were feeling, what we were thinking. Um, it was never anything in angry nature. Yeah, It was always just trying to put together the most lyrical thing um, that that could be portrayed to people where when it someone heard it 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 hit home for them it it could it could be someone's story in a different way right and so that's kind of how we we tried to write and rap i will say that when i freestyle it's not super in depth so if you're going to ask me to freestyle i'm I'm just giving you a glimpse right now it's way better when i sit down and write (laughs) um but yeah so no i i i mean i just love doing it particularly because uh it's fun i catch myself throwing on instrumental sometimes on the drive home and oh yeah and doing that, um, I like surprising myself with seeing, you know, what I could potentially come up with or say or mm-hmm. um, lyrically construct. But I I pretty much just do it for the students. Okay. Like, I know that they, they think that it's super cool and I could say the lamest thing ever. But <laughs> if it rhymes and it's on beat, then, you know, their minds are blown. So, yeah. it's all for the love for the students. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see here. So, in Wenatchee, there's not a lot to do. I don't know if you've <laughs> noticed that. Um, it's perspective, though. It's yeah. perspective, I mean. Um, but lately, we've had a lot more stuff pop up that a lot of people that have lived here their entire lives would call Seattle. Chipotle. <laughs> Chipotle. Um, <laughs> we have that new axe throwing place. Yeah, right, right, right. Um, is there any place in town that you frequent quite often that you would say is like not really hometownish, like yeah. not really small town. Yeah. Besides Chipotle or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Chipotle is pretty corporate. Uh, but I do love me a Chipotle bowl burrito. You know, um, you got to remember. I mean, I'm I'm new to Wenatchee. Yeah. You know, and and before that, I I grew up in metropolitan areas. I mean, Las Vegas has three plus million people that live there, mm-hmm. and. Orange County area, which is only 30 minutes south of L.A., it's its own culture there. So let's not get that twisted and yeah. mixed up. I mean, don't don't tell me I'm from L.A. Um, but, I mean, California as a whole has, like, 39 million people that live there. Yeah. Orange County has, like, six, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and you drive 30 minutes north, and you're in L.A., which has, like, 11 million people. So I always grew up big city. I always okay. grew up... Um, with access to anything at any time at any time of the day i mean las vegas is a 24-hour town so yeah as far as the small town vibe goes um yeah that's tough man i i think the the number one thing that's coming in 
coming into play here where I'm kind of like, okay, that's kind of big city ish. Um, you know, and it's great because we need the different options of this. Um, but planet fitness okay. is, is being built over yeah. in, uh, in the North end part of town or by, by sunny slope. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of the only thing I think of other than that. I mean, I love, I love getting the options. I think something that maybe might not, that might be Seattle-esque is, uh, is the rise of these third generation coffee places, yeah. these, these mom and pop shops, but it's, it's heavily, uh, derived of, of getting the best craft coffee, mm-hmm. right? The, the, the cup of coffee that you can't drive through a drive through and get mm-hmm. right. Um, the culture of atmosphere inside having open mic nights and you know we want you to come and and do your work from here and use this as an office space Mm -hmm. and walk out smelling like espresso yeah um so yeah so i i I think that those those aren't really small town things right uh but i think that it's really great that we're getting them yeah uh like i the place that comes to mind because i have a friend that works there is the uh, seattle coffee yeah place. seattle yoga lounge and cafe yeah. it's a frequent hot spot for me yeah love that place i love the owners. i haven't gone i should go visit rachel one time but yeah totally um <laughs> input on that um love it uh i help lead a bible study on wednesday mornings with a group of young adult guys um and uh, we, we tend to rotate spots where we meet up. Um, mm-hmm. You know, sometimes we meet up there. Sometimes we meet up in Mela, Bella Bistro. Sometimes we hit up the rock climbing gym. Um, but, yeah, no, we – I think it's got a good vibe in there. And, mm-hmm. and what I mean by that is um, it's nice and bright. It's open. It's a big open space. Um, if I were to have one takeaway from it, a little bit more seating – I don't know how they would arrange that with keeping that open model. It is a yoga lounge. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, man, they got good coffee. They they uh, they bring in Campos Coffee, which okay. is uh, originally from Australia. Um, yeah, cultured well. The owners, Teddy and Elvis, they're great. They're super, super nice. And um, they're just always trying to learn more about coffee and yoga. And they're very inviting. Okay. So, And I know that they're they're really trying to reach out to – the high school and college generation, right? And mm-hmm. I think that's pretty cool. So, so I keep forgetting your name. <laughs> um, I could ask so, you a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so, I just want to hear, like, from your perspective. You were born and raised here, right? Born and raised. Yeah. Okay. So, so, um, have you ever like lived in a different location? No. Okay. So, from Wenatchee. So, what is the view like? Most people that live in a spot for so long, and I've only heard great things about Wenatchee. I mean, I've, I really have never heard someone that has moved from a spot to Wenatchee that was like, man, I got to get out of here. I hate it here. Um, and I also think that, um, you know, people that live here either leave for a little bit, but then always make their way back. Right. People just love this valley. And I'm one of them. I'm one of them. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Um, but like I was talking with another buddy of mine who was born and raised here and he's lived in different areas of the world and different parts of the United States. But, um, he, he said to me the other day, I've I've always wanted to kind of experience, uh, or to have understanding on what it's like to not be from Wenatchee and move into Wenatchee. So what's your take on that? Like, what's your curiosity on that? That's interesting. Um, that you say that because we have, a or my, my parents have a friend, his name's, uh, Jamie, he um he's a big director he um mm-hmm. he's from new york yeah he directs um these things called follies mm-hmm. um and there's guilds all over the u.s of just these women that try and do as much um charity work as possible oh, that's pretty cool um and he comes in and constantly he'll talk to my parents or my parents friends and he's like man i can't wait till i'm just like a few more years yeah and then i get to move here that's what he keeps saying and it's going to be interesting to see him move from such a such a big town of or such a big city of new york to here Mm -hmm. um because i think ultimately he's going to have an awakening of 
just like how close everyone he- here is. Because I think you just hit the nail on the head there. Because we have um, a story that I was looking at was there was a um, oh man I can't remember exactly what it was it was someone was um, dating someone mm-hmm. and they weren't supposed to <laughs> and the way they found out was because someone saw them out at Pibus yeah. and called the other person's parents. Yeah, everyone kind of knows everyone. Everyone knows everyone. You, my Which is a great thing. I will say uh, it's a great thing when you're not from here and you got a culture inside of the valley that's like that because once you meet one person, like you pretty much meet just a pool of people. Mm-hmm. And it's... um at least in my circumstance and my wife's circumstance, like we've, we've established ourselves inside of, uh, just a pocket of people who are our tribe now. I mean, we love yeah. them, we cherish them and you know, they've brought us in as family. Um, and I think that's pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, that's my question for you. I feel like you had a little yeah. bit more to say about that. Um, let, me, let me hear it. <laughs> I don't really know what else there is to say. I mean, I have always wanted to move to a lo- uh, Los Angeles or New okay. York. Chaos. But, um, that's solely because I love filmmaking. And okay. I think that's where places that... I mean, if I you're going to go any place for filmmaking, it's probably going to be one of those two spots. Yeah. Um, that's where I could um, see myself growing the most, but... There's so much filmmaking work here in the valley yeah. that I don't want to leave. Okay. It's like, um, but I see myself moving somewhere else if yeah. I were to find a place where I feel comfortable to do that. Okay. Um, yeah. I don't see myself getting married anytime soon. And yeah. I say that not knowing what's happening <laughs> anytime soon. <laughs> You're going to find Bay next week. Exactly. Yeah. You never know. But, right. um, like, I I left high school not knowing what I was going to do, and that's Mm -hmm. rare for, um, at least Eastmont, it was rare for someone to um, leave the high school not going to college, at least not going to Wenatchee Valley or Central, for that matter. Um, I was kind of the minority in that. I went to the tech school um, my senior year, and Mm -hmm. I found my place in filmmaking, and I just kind of ran with it. And now I work at a aerospace engineering yeah. plant. Just balling out. So love it. It, it it's like it just kept flipping, yeah. and people now they hear, oh, nerdy Seth, he works at an <laughs> aerospace plant. I would, yo, I would actually change that uh, that label to baller Seth. <laughs> but that's uh, well, that's I'm, the Seth I'm just I know. I'm just putting out what I um definitely prospected. Totally. Through, through high school yeah yeah totally. and what they're thinking now yeah. is that that's what that person was now they're seeing your content they're yeah like, whoa <laughs> they're like oh geez, this, guy. this guy's yeah. spitting all right this guy's thriving <laughs> uh so i got one more question yeah um based off of that being someone who was born and raised here what in your perspective and your thought is uh is the best part about this valley you tell me yours, and I'll I'll share mine. That's a hard one, because you only get one, dude. I know. <laughs> There's, I I got to give you two because okay. I I okay. can't I can't just give. Okay, one. how about this? How about you give me a one one A and then a one B? All right, yeah. Just so to, just to be one A here. one A is that I have mountain biked since I was in sixth grade, okay. and there is so many trails around this valley mm-hmm. and so much space to do it. Totally. And so much welcomeness to do it. Yeah. Um, no, there's definitely a culture for that. Like, oh, yeah. There's a posse yeah, that, um, that thrives I, in that. I'm part of the the Velo Club, which is a group of bikers. Velo Club. Velo. Velo. Yeah. Not Velcro. No, not Velcro. <laughs> okay. um, Just clarifying. Uh, if you look at, like, uh, Apple Blossom, the yeah. kids, kids weekend, mm-hmm. there's a event that goes on called Lids for Kids. Yeah. Or, right. um, as my dad calls it, hats on brats. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah. Um, and Lids for Kids, they just buy, like, I think it was, I think they're buying 300 to 400 helmets this year. And they're just, they wow. fit them and they give them to the kids. That's pretty cool. And 
that's a, that's a group that um, I found a lot of help in. Uh, my uncle, uh, Ace Bollinger, he works, or er, he's a pretty prominent member. Mm-hmm. He uh, he helps run Bollinger Construction here in the oh, valley cool. with uh, with his dad. Yeah. So. Neat. Okay. Now, what's the second part? Second part. You said the first one, yeah. mal- mountain biking. Um, and it's another sport. Um, it's the skate community. Hey, hey. I've skated since I was nine. Yeah. And uh, I mean, well, I'm, I, a, I'm a skater. I yeah. literally have my skateboard. Right <laughs> I, I see that. <laughs> my my skateboard's in the office or right. my longboard at least. I can't do tricks anymore, which yeah. is sad. Yeah. But I've done skate videos for people around the valley. Totally. And that's how you and I got connected in filming. Yeah. Was you said uh, you you informed me. We were trying to get some content out for uh for our students here and and get some kingdom culture blasted all over the place and i remember you came to me and you're like yeah i could film i could take pictures i i make skate videos yeah for my friends so that's pretty cool so mountain biking and skate culture so extreme sports yeah extreme sports it da- cool. the dangerous ones okay so <laughs> have you have you been over to the new skate park down at hale park i haven't yet i have been so swamped with things that i can't Make it down hey, there. I respect it. I respect <laughs> it. Uh, what's your What's your favorite park then? I mean, there's literally three here. So yeah. I mean. Um. No, the one up in Leavenworth is awesome. Okay, dude. Everyone's been telling me about that, and uh, and I haven't gotten a chance to go up there. Where is it located in Leavenworth? I mean, if you say by the ski hill, <laughs> I don't know where that is either. So it's by the ski hill. Okay. Um, <laughs> you just kind. It's kind of. It's a, like a, there's a back route to it. Yeah, and that's the way I usually take, okay. and it'd be hard to explain over talking. Yeah, totally. I would have to show we'll just you. We'll have to go map. one of these. Yeah, days. I heard there's a pretty cool pump track over there. Yeah, pump track's cool. Nice. I haven't per per Jeez. personally <laughs> used it. <laughs> Goodness gracious, <laughs> that's awesome. I haven't personally used it, yeah. so I I can't say how per- amazing it is, but I've seen people use it, and it looks awesome. Speaking of skateboarding, have you ever been on YouTube and typed in um, the Woodward camp seasons? No. So uh, my personal favorite season is uh, season nine Okay. with uh, with Gavin, Lil Gavo, um, Laser Crawford, and Roman Hager. And uh, pretty much what, what they do is they make these – like 29 30 episodes worth of a, a mini season uh where these kids go to camp woodward for two weeks and they're there and they're just shredding man i mean these kids so fun fact about about connor metcalf also known as c Medi, is uh i just re- i can't believe i just referred to myself as that uh no but uh i grew up skateboarding started when i was four uh, when I was in seventh grade, I was sponsored by a local board shop down in Las Vegas uh, called Board Deep. Board Deep then closed, and so in eighth grade, I got sponsored by a company called Pharmacy. Always an amateur. Um, dude, these kids now would have blown me out of the water. Like, I would have looked like a noob <laughs> compared to these guys. For real. Like, these kids are unbelievable what they're doing. They're just fearless. Like, it gets me motivated. I literally watch... The, these episodes and then i go to the skate park and skate and try to do things that they do and it's way outside of my ability I and mean, i'm 28 and i'm about to have a kid and i realize as i slam and hit the ground can't be breaking bones it's probably this is probably not wise for me to do yet i'm only 19 so i i still have a little bit to break my bones you got nine more years buddy. i got nine more years yeah and but uh after that i you can't f- do anymore you feel it oh but and the other thing too is uh so i actually grew 10 inches in a summer two and a half months i grew 10 okay. inches um at the end of eighth grade i was five four and at the beginning of ninth grade i'm i was six two i'm currently mm. six four so when i skated i was like five foot to five four range <laughs> uh i wore like a size eight in men's mm-hmm. and now i wear a size 13 i'm six four so uh your top he- your top heavy proportions are a little different <laughs> Center of gravity is a little different. <laughs> uh, board size is a little different. So yeah, it's a, it's been a little bit of a transition. But yeah, I I, I have the same experience with growing over summer. Yeah, I was in seventh grade. I was five three. Yeah, and then I grew to five seven, which is where I'm at now. Okay, the summer from You're five seven. I'm five seven. You always seem so much taller than that than me. No, five seven. Not than me, but to me. Maybe five seven and a half now, 
but I when I from seventh to eighth grade, I grew from a five five three to five seven. Are you as tall as Cassidy? Probably, yeah. Cassidy's five ten. Maybe I don't know, dude. I think I you're taller than next five to seven. Cassidy. Five seven is is small, bro. Like, no disrespect to five yeah. seven people out there. Short kings um, are awesome, all right? <laughs> don't no, I dude, don't be I messing love around. Short people. <laughs> I love short people, they dude, short people. You might not be able to reach something on the top shelf in the grocery store, but let me tell you, when you walk into a uh, a clothing store, like you got options. Yeah. You got oh, yeah. options, and and don't if you're if you're short out there, dude. I'm I'm actually envious of you, but don't hit me with that. Oh, the pants are always too long. Cuff them, <laughs> cuff them or get a hemmed. Go to. But a I actually have to order stuff online. I can never walk out of a store except for Old Navy. Shout out Old Navy. <laughs> but I can never walk out of a store with pants. Mm-hmm. And size 13 is like the like I'm a real 12 and a half. They don't even carry those in stores. So, yeah. like, I have to order all my shoes online. So, being big is not always a luxury. Yeah. And you get used. When you're tall, you get the amount of times, and, and I have a loving heart, and I love helping people, but the amount of times I've gotten used to walk through a grocery store and reach the very back box <laughs> of Betty Crocker for, you know, <laughs> Ethel, the old lady, uh... You know, it's like, you know, I love helping them. I love helping them. The other thing where I just get used a lot um, is I'm constantly, by default, the person that has to take the the group selfie because my arms are longer (laughs) than everybody else's. And I'm like, okay, but here's the deal. Short arms or long arms, you can find a way to fit all of us in it. You just don't want to be the one in the front who's got the double chin because you're pulling your face back, right? So let's just be honest there. Yeah. Yeah, those are the two spots where it's like, if you're tall, that's what you're getting used for. The The problem I have with being a tech person is that I'm always getting called to do something tech related. And like, right. I'm not totally. talking, I am I love doing stuff for the youth and doing yeah. stuff for main service, but I'm talking my great grandma's calling me to fix her phones that I'd fixed two hours ago. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> and, and really all that's happened is she accidentally went to settings and turned off her notifications. Exactly. Like, but yeah. she just doesn't know how to do it. Yeah. Oh, it looks yeah. like Cassidy's here. Yeah, my my wife has shown up. She, we should invite her in. Just say hi. Just give a little shout out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she's heading in right now, and it's gonna be good. Uh, we but, Cass, we just wanted you to say what's up and join us on this podcast. Um, this is uh, interviews from my hometown. Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is my wife, Cassidy. My name is Connor, for those of you that maybe have forgotten or, or are tuning in now. You uh, weren't listening. <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah, you weren't listening earlier because I just my voice might put you to sleep. I don't know. But, uh, Cass, what's your favorite thing about uh, – okay, actually, let's backtrack. <laughs> Give us your name. Okay. How many months pregnant you are. <laughs> Uh, when your due date was, <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, but then, uh, tell us a little bit about your hometown, where you're from originally and what your favorite thing about moving to Wenatchee has been name months pregnant hometown favorite part about Wenatchee. Okay. My name is Cassidy. I am nine months pregnant. My due date was yesterday. <laughs> Um, my, I'm from Quincy, Illinois, which is like right on the Western border of Illinois. Yeah. Don't get that twisted with Quincy, Washington. Yeah, it's better Quincy, Washington is nasty. Yeah. Yeah. Quincy, (laughs) Illinois. I wouldn't have gone that far to say that. Uh, but I just don't want there to be any confusion here. Um, my favorite thing about my hometown, it's very similar to Wenatchee and then I feel like it's a very like close knit community where family is really valued. Um, and I think my favorite, like all my, my dad's the oldest of seven. So I have 18, there's 18 grandchildren on that side. So all my family lives back there. And I would say that's my favorite thing about my hometown. Just when we go back to visit, I just get to see everyone and just growing up by all my cousins and stuff was super fun. Um, and my favorite, what was it my favorite thing about moving to Wenatchee? Um, I think 
it's like Quincy on steroids, kind of. <laughs> because I feel like you still get that family aspect. Um, and you still get all the seasons. But you have, like, just this beautiful valley with mountains and so many hikes and a beautiful river and there's just so many because I mean I loved growing up in Illinois but it was just flat so there wasn't much to do but here I just love doing the outdoorsy type stuff with still like that homey and family aspect so I have one more thing for the uh listeners entertainment can you just give us a glimpse into what your maiden name was Gengen Bakker. What? One more, <laughs> one more time for us and then spell it out. Okay. Please. Okay. It's Gengen Bakker. It's very German. Um, no. It's spelled <laughs> G E N G. Okay, wait. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe I'll spell it for her. <laughs> okay, okay. Round two. Here we go. Language of origin. Can you use it in a sentence, please? No. <laughs> okay, G E N G E N B A C H E R, and it's funny because there's in Quincy, Illinois, there's another um, big family. So we're the Ginnenbachers, and there's another huge family, the Ginnenbachers. So they don't have the second G, and I don't know how true this is, but there was a story that like there were these two brothers, and they got in this big fight. So one of them dropped the second g because he didn't want to be related to the first and that's how the family split i don't know how much truth there is to that but it seems pretty legit to me i mean that's a great urban legend i i think you chose the right last name to keep personally <laughs> we were gonna hyphenate but oh <laughs> that would have been fun. then we were gonna have four sheets of a marriage document <laughs> because it wouldn't have fit on just one uh that's a great story that is a great story that's almost i feel like though in every small town there's always kind of like a story like that like i feel like that's uh the only true type of story like that is actually the story between adidas and puma yeah i mean you had two brothers that were creating one shoe and they got in a fight so then they separated yeah they kept the same last name they didn't drop any letters but um yeah I don't have anything else. Seth, I mean, we could keep this going. I keep we asking could. you questions. You could no, keep asking kidding. me questions. I mean, no, I, I think this has been really great, man. Yeah. It's been a pleasure to be here and thanks so much for having me and just, uh, having really fun questions, uh, to ask me about Wenatchee. It makes me more appreciative of this place. And so. yeah, I'm happy to have you sit down with me and, uh, be, let me ask you some questions about what you think of my hometown and how much, uh, how much you love it and how much you praise it and admire it. Come on now. Uh, <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and uh, yeah, dude, thanks again for the Arizona iced tea. I mean, it's oh, been years of course. since I've had one I of these things. I drink this these almost daily. <laughs> that's awesome. And so, yeah. that, I mean, that's like coffee for me. I Yep. Which one? The drink. Oh, th- I had a Red night. Bull last night. Seth had a Red Bull, but it was one the of the modified flavored ones. Um, yeah. tropical Red Bull. It's like the juice ones. Yeah, it's like a juice box on steroids. I was tired last night, so yeah, I went with what was going to give me energy. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. All right, all right. Thanks, Thanks so much, Seth. I Thanks appreciate you. On.